Hi everyone and welcome back to Chess for Charity. In this video, you're going to see an insane chess puzzle. So the beginning of this puzzle may not be so crazy, but the end of it, it'll just completely surprise you. At least it surprised me. So hopefully you feel the same way. It's white to move here. Just take a second, see what you can assess from the position. Is white trying to win? Is white trying to draw? What's the best that they can do? Currently there's a pawn on b2, threatening promotion, and it's also a pawn on c7, threatening promotion. How does this work? See what you can figure out here. So take a second and feel free to pause the video. While you're thinking about this, let me quickly encourage you to subscribe if you have not yet already. Half of the income that I earn on this channel goes directly to charity, and we recently donated our monthly for September, and we are now at $1,100. So thank you all so much for everybody who's donated by really just giving your time. Okay. Let's get to it. So let's first say the obvious point. This knight is protecting this square on c8. Therefore, I cannot just promote this. It'll just get captured. No kidding. And I can check, but now we have to make a decision with the king. And it may seem like it doesn't matter because it feels like you're just avoiding the check and you're going to promote either way, but it does matter. Let's say, for example, the king goes to f7. Sorry, d7 instead of f7. This rook would swing right behind the pawn and target b2. Seems sensible, right? And you might think, well, wait a second. Can't black just interpose on b5? Wouldn't this just be game over? Well, it would be, but unfortunately, I promote with, with checkmate. So you can't do that in this case. So in this position, the best that black has is to take and then take, and this will fizzle out to a draw. They can take here, they can play here. It's There's not much to, to win. There's not much life in the position left. Okay, so let's go back. The point that I'm making is you cannot go to d7, right? That's going to fizzle out to a draw pretty easily without much resistance. What if instead you go to f7? And this is kind of where the puzzle begins. So you might say, wait a second, can I just do the same thing? go rook b8, and I'm going to track down this pawn. Now black likely saw that coming, and is like, yeah, you can do that, but I have this nice intermediate move, sorry, interference move, knight b5. And now the question is, what are you going to do? You want to promote? Does that sound like a good idea? Well, it looks like a good idea, but I can promote, and that is check, and not to mention mate. The queen will have to interpose. That's mate. All the squares are covered around, which means you cannot promote the pawn. Okay, so how are you stopping this pawn on b2? Well, the short story is you're not. You have to instead give up your rook on f8. The reason being, the king can take it or they can move. But in either way, that buys you time. Okay, if you're playing black, black here, what do you do? Do you walk into this thinking, hey, I might get checkmated. There's a lot of stuff on the board here. There's a knight, pawn, this pawn's going. Or do you take and let them promote because you're going to promote next? Well, one of them will result in an immediate loss. For example, you capture. I play c8 equals queen. You play king f7. I play the very slick queen c2. And now there isn't much that can be done. I'm going to take this pawn and it's going to be a pretty easy win. If you're like me, you thought about this a little bit more, and this is the variation I was thinking. Maybe you're thinking the same. Knight check, and I was like, what happens if the queen takes? Is this still a draw? Well, it's not. They queen, right? That's with check, by the way. So you have to be disciplined on this check. King d4 is enough, and if they promote, this is totally fine. You can take, take, and this pawn is creating a little barrier. So you're good. Pretty crazy. The details in these positions, so amazing. Okay, let's go back. So that's if they take your rook, right? That's that variation. So just to be clear, so far, we checked them, they moved out of the way, got behind the pawn, they interfered, we gave up our rook, now they move away because we just established they cannot take it. Now, there's another stunning move in this position. And you might be like, how in the world does this make sense? 
The move here is a knight move. It is knight to f4 check. What in the world is happening here? So first of all, this knight can be captured. The king can take the pawn. The king can also just move. So let's talk about that. Let's just work backwards. If the king moves, what happens? I can give up my rook with check, and now you're forced to take it because you can't go back because this knight's protecting. And after you take it, I queen, king h7, and I can go queen c2. And we'll go back to this variation in just a minute. This is a little preview for what you might see in a moment. Okay, so after this, what if instead of moving to h7, what if they take the pawn? Well, now I just play rook h8 check. King plays king g7. And now there are a couple of options. I can play knight takes e6. And the idea, of course, being if you ever go to the back rank, I'm going to promote. So then king g6, rook g8, and this is going to be a draw because you can't really approach. If you do, you're going to get mated. In this case, you'll get mated. Careful, careful. You can even promote to a bishop. Ouch. Isn't that a cool variation? There are so many cool variations in these puzzles. Hopefully you're enjoying them as much as I am. Okay, well, what's the critical line? I'm sure you're wondering, why can't I just take? Let's talk about that. I don't want to belabor the point here. Okay, you play knight f4 check. They take it. What's the deal? Here's the deal. This is crazy. Ready? Ready for this? c8 equals queen. Saying, I don't even care. And you might go, wait a second. How is that doing anything? Doesn't that just allow them to promote? And the answer is yes. b1 equals queen. You can take this with your king. And this is going to be a draw. It may not seem like it, but this is a draw because there's not a way to make any progress. Just to show you a sample line of the computer, maybe queen b4, king g3, queen e1. Do you take this pawn? Yeah, sure. Nothing wrong there. You're not getting mated. The rook is strong. Queen is strong. This pawn is holding stuff. You have to be careful of this pawn. This is a draw. Okay. So the variation I showed at the very beginning of this, which I want to revisit, because this is the variation that stunned me. And I think that's not even an exaggeration to say that it stunned me. King h7, you play rook h8, you take. I queen. Now here is the crazy variation. Are you ready for this? King h7, I play queen c2. And now the question is, what do you do as black? Now you might say, okay, what's so stunning about this? Well, it's kind of, in a little bit of a way, it's kind of a Zugzwang situation. If, let's just say, for example, the bishop takes the pawn. Well, now, I take this, and I have a queen. So you don't want to just give away your pawn for nothing, because I have a queen against pretty much, what would this be, three pawns and a piece? In this endgame, white is much better. White's going to pick off these pawns, not like this, but that's the idea. So what do you do? Well, you want to protect this pawn, right? Well, you can't. So here is the stunning thing. They promote. And now, are you ready for this? What is white's move? Just take a second. What is white's move? You might think, you just take it. What, what's wrong with this? If you take it, you get forked and you lose the game. You don't want that. Instead, there is an amazing move here. This is the move that is absolutely incredible. If you want one more second, pause the video, please. If you don't see it yet, just give it a second and you're going to absolutely lose your mind. King e3, check. What? Well, now, if they move their king, you take their queen and you're up a queen. So they have to take you, right? If they do, that is stalemate. Look at this insane, insane puzzle. You just stalemated yourself in the middle of the board with your queen hanging on an empty square of c2. That is ridiculous. It's so, so cool. And there's not much they had. They could do this, promote to a bishop, but incredibly, it doesn't make a difference. I can now play, are you ready for this? Knight to d3. This is ridiculous. I love it. And if they take here, look at this. It's stalemate again. Come on. 
Come on, man. That's just, that's insane. I hope you can appreciate this. I absolutely love this study. And maybe you're asking, what if they don't take? I absolutely love the study. It's crazy. If they don't take, maybe they play, I don't know, what do they they do? Here, you can't take it because of the fork. Well, you just go back. Because there's no, you have all of these pieces. And the best thing, according to the computer, is bishop b1. And you play knight d3 again. Come on, this is insane. So just take one more look at this crazy puzzle and the end in particular. King h7, queen c2, and after they promote, you make the craziest move I've seen in quite some time. King e3, check, giving up your queen, but you do it for one reason. That reason, of course, stalemate. Pretty super cool in my opinion. If you liked it, please let me know. I don't know. Did you see that coming at all? I don't know. Maybe it's just me. This one blows my mind. But that is it for now. Thank you so much for watching. Bye.